Hi, it's Jillian from Jilly Bean Pottery, and I'm here today to talk more about jewelry. So, you know, what is everyone's kind of go-to jewelry? Well, it's pendants, obviously. It's super easy, very easy to wear and accessorize with. It's kind of like the most obvious beginning choice is a necklace, a pendant. And what are the different types of pendants? Well, as you get into jewelry making, you know, independent of what material you're, you're using, to make your pendant itself, you still have all of the jewelry stuff, right? <laughs> you have chains and cords, jewelry findings, jewelry tools, clasps, uh, bales, jump rings, I mean, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. You should see my box over there with all my jewelry stuff in it. So how do we get to a satisfying result intro kind of satisfying result in terms of um, jewelry making without going too crazy because we're just starting out we're just fine figuring out maybe if this is for us if we can enjoy it if we don't we want to invest all this money in jewelry tools we already have so many clay tools right or maybe we're already thinking about clay tools it's a whole separate thing right so how do we start so a lot of traditional jewelry um, you might have if you saw my last YouTube video um, there are beads, and this is certainly an easy and accessible project right here. This is just a single bead on a chain, right? So super accessible project, um, requires little, you know, um, jewelry experience. You could buy a pre-made chain. As long as it fits through the hole, you're good to go, right? Um, here's actually a bead that I made, um, and if you saw my video, you'll, you've seen my, like, kind of big crazy beads. This is one of them. And, you know, here I have a pre-made, um, it's not a chain, but it's a kind of metal circle. And it just comes apart like that. I can easily string this through, right? Close the clasp and boom, I'm ready to go, right? So beads are certainly a good option. A lot of times though, we think of pendants and we think, okay, well, we gotta put a hole, a hole at the top. And here's such a pendant, right? This piece of clay pendant I made. And when I first started making jewelry, I thought this is exactly what I had to do. I had to get a piece like this and I had to put that little teeny hole at the top. Sometimes I had bigger holes. Mm. It looked really kind of gross because you could see the hole. And then I started doing teeny holes, but then how do you attach it? That's where you gotta start by, you know, doing jewelry findings like this. This is um, a pinch bale. And you can see it's got a like clasp with two little um, points and it's got a hole and it's actually fairly easy, right? I stick, you can see that, and I stick that in my hole, I close the two together and I've pinched it together with my finger so very few, you know, tools, voila, string it, jewelry, right? That's so complicated. I gotta find a bale. And a lot of times they're different metals, you know, to match different chains. So you gotta find one that works with the color. So complicated. Bale. Bead. Then you also have, and you can also have done this um, with a jump ring and did it, attach a jump ring and then attach this. Um, I kind of consider this the beginner, you know, jump rings. Not that they're complicated, but they're, you know, this is a little bit more beginner. And then you have a true bale. This is a glued on bale, right? Ceramic flower I carved. And I glued this bale on, which is fine. But then you gotta wait for it to dry. You gotta find a good um, color. You have to hope that the bale is hidden and you can't see it from the front, right? But same thing, you know, on right so that's an option or or you can be a genius <laughs> and not have to buy a whole bunch of different things just buy your chain heck buy millions of chains and cords and coordinate this I don't know what its name is but it's all ceramic it's all clay plenty of room nothing extra to buy to attach this to a chain. Heck, I could raid my jewelry box today, steal a chain from another piece, 
and be good to go. The best part is unlike the pinch bale, unlike the other bales, unlike a jump ring even, you cannot see how it's attached. It floats. It just floats. I think that's so cool. So I'm going to show you today and take you through how to do this. It's super easy. It's super cool. You're going to love it. Okay, so what do you need for this project? Obviously you need some clay. I've already rolled mine out. You want to get a piece of clay and roll it out um, approximately an eighth of an inch thick or thinner. Um, I used my, um, just the same time I pre-did it, I used my rolling pin. These are even dough bands. They're available for baking and cooking. Um, I got mine on Amazon. And the even dough bands are great because you can attach them and roll your clay out. Now you, this, you might look at this and think it's a little thick. It actually has some give. And so when you press firmly, it goes a little bit, at least for me, I find it goes a little bit um, thinner than the band, but it comes a package, comes with like four different widths and there's definitely thinner ones on there and thicker ones on there, so it's great. Um, if you're looking on how to roll a slab evenly, I have a YouTube video on that, but even dough bands is what I use for jewelry because they're a smaller piece of clay. You're gonna need a wooden skewer. You can get these at the dollar store, super cheap. Um, and if you saw my bead video, same thing, this is my go-to jewelry tool right here. You're gonna need a bowl of water. Maybe yours is a little cleaner. I kinda like just throw bits of clay in there. It gets a little dirty. Um, a paintbrush. I like kids' paintbrushes. This one's pretty um, beat up and scuzzy, but it's beautiful in all of its scuzziness. Um, but we are going to be attaching things, so we're going to need a slip and score, so we'll need that water. And my, I like the paintbrush versus my finger. You're going to need potentially a needle tool or a small knife. You could use a paring knife. If you don't have a needle tool, use a toothpick. Heck, use the pointy end of your skewer. It's not going to be as clean when you cut pieces out, but it'll work. And something to smooth your clay with. Um, the other things you might need are different found objects. Um, I have all sorts of fun things. I make some of my own stamps, which I'll cover in another video. So, you know, there are different things like that. And then lastly, and this is optional, okay? These are optional tools to have. I taught you how to make them yet, but I wanted to preview them. And if you guys like them, I will teach you how to make them. I have made my very own personalized cookie cutters that I use for my jewelry making. These are optional. This is how you're gonna do it and cut your shapes if you don't have your own personalized cookie cutters. We'll cover this in another video. I um, have to borrow some metal snips before I can show you how to do it. <laughs> but this is, um, and these are just soda cans. So, um, but these are you're gonna be your go-to's if you don't have this. Okay, I'm gonna be showing it with this, but know that you can cut anything with this. Okay, so I have my clay here, and I, I'm not fully set up on my videoing yet, so just know that uh, hopefully it'll get better. <laughs> but I have my slab of clay. As you can see here, and it's fairly thin, and I'm just gonna take some tools, and, and this is my process. You might have a different process. You might be more thoughtful I like to kind of have fun with it. So I'm going to take, this is a tire I have, and I'm just going to make some marks. Okay. I'm going to take this, this is a favorite of mine. I use this side, which kind of seems weird. And I'm going to press that in super, super firm. I'm going to set it down for a second to do that. I'm going to press that in. The world's greatest tool, but I love how it looks. You can see there, that was this. Okay. I have this bottle cap. I'm going to press in. And what am I doing? Okay, I'm making like kind of like a C, and I'm going to overlap some of them, a C of pattern and texture. And what I find is this helps guide my creative process. 
So if you look at this piece here, you can see oh, there's that same tire. And there's different lines and things on here. And I use it to divide my color, right? So here I had a line of texture here, but one color here, color up there. So I did that. And I'll be talking about glaze in a different video, but I kind of use it to break up my pattern and, and to be more thoughtful. It's a little bit of a piece of abstract art I kind of look at it as. You can do fun things like some holes. And my goal here is just to have fun with it. I'm not trying to do anything interesting and overly intentional. I'm just making pattern. Sometimes my thing drops. sorts of patterns here. The next thing that I do, and this is just my process, like I said, you might you might cut out plain pendants, cut out a shape, and then just create your own scene on that, you know, um, your own design that way. There's no right or way wrong or way to do this. This is what I kind of feel like is a good um, starting place, especially if you're not sure where to start. Then I take my now, if you don't have a cutter and you're using a uh, just a pin tool, take um, take like a, your hands and kind of like go like this around the piece, right? And and what I'm looking for when I do that is I'm looking for interesting compositions, okay? So I'm looking for an interesting segment or intersection of texture that I can cut out, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll use this whole slab and I'll cut all sorts of interesting texture compositions. Will they all be fabulous? No. Will some of them be amazing? Maybe. Will some be just okay? Sure. But all of them are good. And one thing that people don't always say when you're first starting clay is make as much stuff as you can. Keep it all. Glaze it all. Okay, why? Um, when you're doing that, if you keep the crap, when you're learning to glaze or you're glazing a new type of thing, like you're learning a different way to glaze, a, a different method of glazing, you don't want to do that on your best pieces. You want to practice on your crap. So keep it all. <laughs> keep the crap until you feel comfortable and then you can be more selective, okay? So I'm just going to look for some interesting compositions here. I gotta get that juicer in because it's my favorite. And with this, I'm just pushing it in. <laughs> but you could cut yourself um, a template. Like I could absolutely use, you know, something like this and cut around it. It doesn't matter. You might even find that you have a cookie cutter that works great um, and that you can use also for um, a pendant look. Ooh. This is the worst cookie cutter ever because it has these holes that pick up clay. So annoying. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to do a couple because I want to show you. But you can see here, and sometimes I have to do a little bit of trimming. But you can see here, here's one. Okay. So we got a couple different things going on there. And this is where I'm using this to refine my cookie cutter out shapes if I have to. And nothing's set in stone. I can cut out this shape and then trim it smaller, you know, who cares? Okay, here's, okay, another option. 
so the next thing I'm gonna do okay you're gonna be tempted to clean up all these edges you can take your finger and a little bit of the water um, don't go crazy here less is more this is actually where the brush can be really helpful because the brush acts like a small sponge it doesn't transfer too much but I've absolutely seen people ruin whole pieces because they put too much water water weakens your clay um, with jewelry you want to be so precise and clean that you know I kind of make an exception a little bit on my water stands but if you ever watch my um, how to smooth the clay edge without water I will like you will see my soapbox and you'll be like what she is totally different in her jewelry video <laughs> I'm just cleaning up these edges just a little bit. You'll notice I'm not getting the piece super wet. This is, I'm just painting a little water on and going over with my finger. I am not in any way, shape, or form going crazy. In fact, most of the piece still looks pretty dry, okay? Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, and I don't know if you've noticed, I'm gonna unhook this chain. But the piece is not flat. Okay, it's got a dome and it's got a dome to hide this okay and create some space so I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna use my fingers gently gently if it's too wet it won't work well it'll just be floppy okay I'm gonna stick it in my hand I can gently press into the palm of curvature of my hand and I can create a nice curve that way okay there's one same thing with this Subtle, but it's there. The next thing I'm going to do is cut out two small circles of clay. They don't have to be big. I have a specific cutter just for those. It's about the size of a nickel. About a nickel. Okay. So if you have a nickel, you don't have a your own personal cutter yet. I promise. I promise. I'll do the video on how to make these because it's so much fun. Um, trace a nickel. Okay. So I'm going to cut out two nickel shape. I'm really just gonna finish one on camera so you can see two is probably a little ambitious. Okay, so I have my nickel shape clay. With the same cutter, I'm gonna cut out that. So it looks like a mushroom. Mushroom. Upside down mushroom. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do with this is going to pinch all the edges every single edge pinch and thin it out and it too is going to get domed okay and then I'm going to take my needle tool or if you don't have one use your skewer point and I'm going to score and scratch that so anytime we attach two pieces of clay we score and slip um, and that's the glue that holds it together. Why that works is a longer discussion we won't get into today in the interest of time. But you're gonna score the top of the mushroom and the bottom of the stem. You don't need to do these sides here, okay? And then you're gonna get that nice and wet. Your paintbrush, just the parts that you scored. Just the parts you scored. And then you're gonna take your piece and you're gonna decide, do I want it to hang this way? Do I want it to hang this way? Do I want it to hang this way? How do I want it to hang, okay? Any way is, it's up to you. I'm gonna go this way, but this is kind of a fun way to go too. Maybe I'll go, I'm gonna go this way. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm going to attach, that's my cat. He's a studio cat when he wants to be, only when he wants to be. And I'm going to kind of set this tentatively there. Before I start attaching too much, I'm going to take my skewer and I'm going to go through. Why? Because I want to make sure I have plenty, plenty of room for my chain to go through. Okay, so now I'm starting to smooth and integrate that thinned out clay that I scored and add some water to to create a slip. And if you have to kind of press out your thing less dome certain parts, that's okay. You want to 
attach the top and the bottom, okay? And it should be well enough attached that you can go like this. This is what you want it to look like. Now you might take a look at this and, you know, I might, because it kind of is looking weird right now, I might, you know, dome it a little less than I had originally manipulate that a little bit. I can use my brush. I'm not adding a ton of water here, just enough to kind of like even up some edges. Okay, and then I want to be careful not to create too little, um, too much water, or to collapse that, that nice dome. Okay, but once I have that, where I can stick this through, and there's plenty of room, I will absolutely have room for a chain of any kind. It's one of the bigger holes that you can make. There's actually more room in there than a bead. Hi, <laughs> cat. Um, it's okay, kitten. Um, <laughs> and it's so great and easy. You would fire this, you know, bisque fire it. And then when you glaze fire, you can glaze it flat like this. So there's no issue with. So there it is, how you make your own bale that's hidden and behind the, the chain. Super easy, super great, have fun.